Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Shopping on a budget can change everything. When income is limited, sometimes we have to alter our consumption patterns in order to afford the goods we need to meet our needs and wants. Limited income can not only determine the quantity of goods and services that you buy, but it can also mean that choices must be made about the type of goods and services you purchase. We've all experienced it. You're in the pharmacy aisle at Target and you need cold medicine. You spot all the brand names, Tylenol, Advil, Mucinex, Sudafed, but right next to all those brand names is the Target brand generic cold medicine. The brand name medicines are about $5 more expensive than the generic Target brand medicine, and you have a budget due to a limited monthly income. You check out the product details, and the generic brand medicine appears to be identical to the brand name medicines, but you wonder if it's effective. Finally, you decide to roll the dice and buy the Target brand medicine to save some money and buy more of everything else you need on your shopping list. In that experience, your choices as a consumer were influenced by your income elasticity. Income elasticity measures the change in consumer demand for normal or inferior goods when a consumer's disposable income changes. In other words, how much will a change in your disposable income affect your demand for name brand goods like Kellogg's Corn Pops or inferior goods like generic store brand pops of corn? Just like the price elasticity, and cross-price elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand can either be more elastic or inelastic. When the income elasticity of demand is more elastic, consumer demand for normal and inferior goods is very responsive to changes in disposable income. This means that income plays a huge role in the market. And as such, any change in disposable income, no matter how big or how small, will cause consumers to dramatically alter their consumption of normal and inferior goods. When the income elasticity of demand is more inelastic, consumer demand for normal and inferior goods is not very responsive to changes in disposable income. This means people will continue to buy products no matter their income. And as such, any change in disposable income, no matter how big or how small, will not cause consumers to alter their consumption of normal and inferior goods much at all. The income elasticity of demand can be gauged by using the income elasticity coefficient. The income elasticity coefficient is a number that tells us exactly how much consumers will alter their demand for a good when their disposable income changes. The coefficient can be calculated by taking the percentage change in demand for a good and dividing it by the percentage change in a consumer's disposable income. When the coefficient is greater than one, demand is income elastic and consumers are more responsive to changes in disposable income. When the coefficient is less than one, demand is income inelastic and consumers are less responsive to changes in disposable income. When the coefficient is equal to one, demand is income unit elastic and consumers will respond proportionally to changes in disposable income. Let's practice. Suppose that a consumer's disposable income increases from $200 to $250, and their demand for beef, a normal good, increases from 10 pounds to 15 pounds. When the consumer's disposable income jumped by 25%, the consumer increased their consumption of beef by 50%. This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of 2, which means that the consumer's demand for beef, a normal good, is income elastic. Now suppose that a consumer's disposable income decreases from $500 to $400, and their demand for supermarket brand cereal, an inferior good, increases from 5 boxes to 6 boxes. When the consumer's disposable income fell by 20%, the consumer increased their consumption of supermarket brand cereal by 20%.
This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of 1, which means that the consumer's demand for supermarket brand cereal, an inferior good, is income unit elastic. Finally, suppose that a consumer's disposable income decreases from $125 to $100, and their demand for milk, a normal good, decreases from 10 gallons to 9 gallons. When the consumer's disposable income fell by 20%, the consumer decreased their consumption of milk by 10%. This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of 0.5, which means that the consumer's demand for milk, a normal good, is income inelastic. The income elasticity coefficient can also tell us whether a good is a normal good or an inferior good. When the income elasticity coefficient is positive, it means the good being analyzed is a normal good. When the income elasticity coefficient is negative, it means the good being analyzed is an inferior good. Think about it. Normal goods are luxury or name brand goods that are usually more expensive in the market. Because of this, income can play a huge role in determining whether to buy these goods. Suppose that a consumer is in the market for an iPhone, a normal good, and the consumer's disposable income increases. Because the consumer now has more disposable income to spend, they'll be more willing and more able to buy an iPhone, even if it's at a higher price. So, when a good is a normal good, an increase in the consumer's disposable income will cause an increase in the consumer's demand for the good. On the other hand, if the consumer's disposable income decreases, the consumer now has less disposable income to spend. So, they'll be less willing or less able to buy an iPhone, even if it's at a lower price. So, when a good is a normal good, a decrease in the consumer's disposable income will cause a decrease in the consumer demand for the good. Considering these facts, if a good is a normal good, it'll produce a positive income elasticity coefficient. Inferior goods are non-luxury or generic goods that are usually less expensive in the market. Again, because of this, income can play a huge role in determining whether to buy these goods. Suppose that a consumer is in the market for generic brand bottled water, an inferior good, and the consumer's disposable income increases. Because the consumer now has more disposable income to spend, they'll be less willing or less able to buy generic brand bottled water because they're now more willing and more able to buy fancy name brand bottled water like Aquafina or Fiji water. With more money to spend, they don't need to turn to the cheaper generic brands anymore because they can afford normal goods that are more expensive. So, when a good is an inferior good, an increase in the consumer's disposable income will cause a decrease in the consumer's demand for the good. On the other hand, if the consumer's disposable income decreases, the consumer now has less disposable income to spend, so they'll be more willing or more able to buy generic brand bottled water because they are less willing to pay higher prices or they simply can't afford the fancy bottled water from the name brands. With less money to spend, they're forced to turn to the cheaper, generic brands because they can't afford normal goods that are more expensive. So, when a good is an inferior good, a decrease in the consumer's disposable income will cause an increase in the consumer's demand for the good. Considering these facts, if a good is an inferior good, it'll produce a negative income elasticity coefficient. Let's do a little practice. Suppose that a consumer's disposable income increases from $400 to $440, and the demand for good A increases from 20 units to 25 units. When the consumer's disposable income rose by 10%, the consumer increased their consumption of good A by 25%. This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of positive 2.5, which means that good A is a normal good and the consumer's demand for good A is income elastic. Now suppose that a consumer's disposable income decreases from $1,000 to $750, and 
and the demand for good D increases from 10 units to 14 units. When the consumer's disposable income fell by 25%, the consumer increased their consumption of good D by 40%. This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of negative 1.6, which means that good D is an inferior good, and the consumer's demand for good D is income elastic. Now suppose that a consumer's disposable income decreases from $500 to $250, and the demand for good Y increases from 12 units to 15 units. When the consumer's disposable income fell by 50%, the consumer increased their consumption of good Y by 25%. This gives us an income elasticity coefficient of negative 0.5, which means that good Y is an inferior good, and the consumer's demand for good Y is income inelastic. Assume that this is the market for good C. Good C has an income elasticity coefficient of positive 0.75, and the consumer's disposable income increases. Because the income elasticity for good C is positive, we know that good C is a normal good. As a result, if the consumer's disposable income increases, the demand for good C, a normal good, will increase, causing the price of good C to increase and boost the quantity of good C sold in the market. Now assume that this is the market for good Z. Good Z has an income elasticity coefficient of negative 1.4, and the consumer's disposable income increases. Because the income elasticity for good Z is negative, we know that good Z is an inferior good. As a result, if the consumer's disposable income increases, the demand for good Z, an inferior good, will decrease, causing the price of good Z to fall and reducing the quantity of good Z sold in the market. And that's income elasticity. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find the videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my micro minute video on normal and inferior goods, or you can click here for my micro minute video on the income elasticity coefficient. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.